Hey everyone, in the news this week. Dame Maggie Smith passed away, or as the newspapers call her, Professor McGonagall, or as I call her, Professor McGon. I'm increasingly starting to think that the Harry Potter movies had a curse placed on them, as we've now lost Hagrid, Snape, McGonagall and Lady Malfoy. I guess in another few decades there'll be no actors left. Prime Minister Keir Starmer came under increasing pressure this week after details leaked out about how he was given free use of an £18 million penthouse without declaring it. I saw one newspaper go with the headline, quote, Labour are starting to feel the heat, which I guess is in stark difference from the pensioners he recently sold down the river who won't be feeling any heat now that he's scrapped their winter fuel payment. Just Stop Oil protesters were up to their usual nonsense, throwing some soup over Van Gogh sunflowers. And it just makes me sad that they're so humorless and unimaginative, because if it was me doing it, I'd go throw sunflowers at one of those Campbell soup paintings by Andy Warhol, just to mix it up a bit. And there's also been interesting moves in Europe, with Germany reinstating border controls following the spiralling situation of seemingly endless stabbings and violent crime all carried out by undocumented migrants from Africa and the Middle East. It's quite a piece of legal gymnastics when you look into it. You can't have border controls because of Schengen, and that's enshrined in treaty. No country can propose changes to it. Therefore, Germany is justifying what it's doing in a principle of a unique higher law that overrules it, apparently, which raises the question of what happens when other countries start flagrantly breaching EU protocol as well. Perhaps Italy or France will cite what Germany is up to when choosing to ignore certain bits of the rules about budgets. This may very well be the ignition point of how monetary union falls apart, or perhaps not. It makes me think of the old saying about the optimist and the pessimist and whether the glass is half full or half empty, but personally I always thought if the optimist really was one, then he'd just cheerfully swig the last half glass of wine and assume he'd get away with it. Especially if it's France or Italy we're talking about here. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.